please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. On the show today, we test drive the new Audi A5 Cabriolet. Rohit checks out the latest technological marvels at the 2018 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Shumi answers all of your queries on Auto Selector and all the buzz on Motoring News this week. Hi, welcome to Overdrive. You're watching the show with me, so we need that. Now, the Audi A5 Brat Pack recently debuted in India and we took one of the coolest ones from the pack and drove it to one of our favourite roads close to home. Take a look. Compared to the last year when we reviewed the Audi A3 Cabriolet, the winter this year is a little more pleasant. 17 degree mornings between 22 to 25 degrees through the day. That's some lovely weather to enjoy a convertible, isn't it? So this time around, the convertible we have with us here today is the A5 Cabriolet, the elder sibling to the A3. And if you ask me, one of the best lookers in the A5 lineup. Times when most Audi sedans look too similar to each other, the A5 lineup grabs attention with its sporty form and tight curves. The Cabriolet takes it a notch forward. I've said this before as well, I think the A5 is one of the best looking cars that Audi has on sale in India right now. And out of that A5 lineup, I think the convertible looks the best. Unlike the four door sportback, this is based on the two door coupe. It has a fabric hat has a low slung stance, all those lines nicely converging into that face. It looks fast whether it's standing still or actually going fast around twisties. The satin finish on the windshield frame adds a classy touch while the red fabric on the roof looks sporty. The A5 Cabriolet looks the best with its roof tucked away, which by the way takes only 15 seconds. The cabin layout is similar to the A5 Sportback, but darker colours are used in the Cabriolet to give it better endurance against our dusty conditions. Being based on the two-door coupe, the rear seat space isn't as roomy as the back seat of the A5 Sportback. The fit and finish is typically high grade and the attention to detail is satisfying to say the least. If you feel that it's getting a little too breezy or if you're done soaking in the elements, it hardly takes 18 seconds to pull the roof back on. And once you do, this car converts itself into a typically silent Audi. The cabin is spookishly silent, very refined. And then you can just summon the services of the Bang and Olufsen audio unit. I think it sounds great whether you have the roof on, whether you have the roof off. That system sounds great. You also have this little mic on the seat belt, which ensures that even if the outdoors are a little too noisy, you can still have a decent telephonic conversation and continue enjoying your open-top motoring. Like the Sportback, the A5 Cabriolet 2 employs the trusty 2-litre diesel engine that develops 190 PS of power and 400 Newton meters of torque. It is mated to a quick 7-speed DSD. In typical Audi fashion, the drivetrain is silent, refined and surprisingly free revving for a diesel. In our tests, the A5 Cabriolet hit the ton in 8.4 seconds from a standstill. Blink of an eye slower than the Sportback's 7.7 .7 second run. The power delivery is linear, while the healthy torque ensures great drivability in the city, on the highway and around the twisties. Unlike the A5 Sportback, the Cabriolet gets the Quattro all-wheel drive system as well. So should you decide to go corner carving, the Cabriolet obliges with confidence-inspiring grip. Different driving modes also alter the character of the drivetrain to suit your mood. The package works so nicely, it almost makes you wish for the S5's TFSI Stonker under the hood. This car certainly lacks the oral drama of the S5. It takes a more practical approach with its diesel engine. Now, I was driving the S5 out on the racetrack a little while back. I drove it on these very roads as well. And I think I'm okay with the sort of approach that this car takes because 
the S5 with its sportier setup, its sportier suspension, it tends to squirm, track quite a lot on the bumpy surface that you have on most of the roads in India. This car on the other hand feels more supple, feels more pliant. Even when you are in the dynamic mode, it will handle quite well, but at the same time, it won't feel as stiff, which is a very good thing. So if you don't really want something that wants to be a sports car or goes around like a sports car, I think this car is a very, very good choice. In fact, the A5 convertible is priced very close to the S5, but this car brings a lot more practicality to the table. And I think with its fabric top and its low slung stance, I think it also looks very nice. It gives you that exclusivity of a convertible. And when the weather or the conditions allow it, you can also enjoy the open top motoring. So if I were to put my money on one, I think I would happily choose the A5 convertible over the S5 any day. So that one point we can truly agree upon is that driving an A5 Cabriolet is truly indicative of your lifestyle. Hi Shumi, our first question this week comes in from Vadodara. Dhawal writes in saying that he wants to buy a petrol automatic hatchback or a compact sedan with the latest features as well as comfort. He has shortlisted the Maruti Suzuki Baleno as well as the Maruti Suzuki Desire. Which one would you suggest? Dhawal, good choices. The Baleno and the Desire are both excellent cars. Whichever one you buy, you'll be happy. The balance that you're looking for is, would you like your car to be super involving to drive, in which case get a Bellino, or do you want a better all-round package, in which case get a Desire? Honestly, it's very hard for me to tell you which one to prefer between these two, but I think more people will be happier with the Desire overall than the Bellino. If you're a sports enthusiast though, no choice about it, you must get a Bellino. And our final question this week comes in from Mahidar Mitra. He writes in from Bangalore saying, he wants to know which motorcycles are expected in the sub 500cc premium category from Yamaha this year. Good luck. Well, honestly, we do know something about Yamaha. We know that the R15 version 3 will be at the Auto Expo most likely, an Indianized version of the Indonesian bike. We know that it will be priced somewhere around the Auto Expo itself, but not really at the event. And the price shouldn't go up from the current R15 by too much. The other bike that Yamaha will definitely launch is the BS4 compliant version of the R3. We're hoping it gets ABS and better tires. I think it'll get better tires, but not ABS because ABS is only mandatory from 2019 for existing models. Apart from that, what is Yamaha doing? Well, your guess is as good as mine. But Yamaha Japan did release a statement that said India Yamaha will now focus on the premium segment a lot more than it has done in the past. And we're hoping that the first results of that come out this year. Fingers crossed. Auto Selector, of course, is that segment where we answer all of your motoring queries. So don't hesitate to send us any more queries on helpdesk at overdrive.co.in. And you can send them to us via Facebook as well as Twitter. And we will get Shumi to answer them for you on the show. Now, of course, there's been a lot of buzz this week from other manufacturers, starting, of course, with Bajaj. Uh, all the motorcycles in the commuter segment was launched earlier this week. Then we moved on to Lamborghini to see its first SUV in the Indian market. Take a look. That, the Lamborghini Urus. Now it's an all new SUV and as you know, Lamborghini has a history to making SUVs, the cult LM002. But in front of us right now, we have got the Euros. And from the very first fact, the first appeal, I think it looks really, really gorgeous. So it is a Lamborghini, so obviously sleek design, cuts and edges is a given. But then, look at what they've done to the front. I mean, it's so aggressive and there's so much of noise, but you know, not in, the, in a loud way. I like the fact that, you know, Lamborghini has uh, tastefully made all the changes to make it to make the SUV have your traditional aero elements that you would expect from a Lamborghini at the same time make it really really distinct that my friends is the the other uh, ceramic brakes and it is the you should know that the Urus gets the largest ever size of ceramic brakes that you can get in a production car as you move towards the side I think that is where it starts to look really really different from whatever you've seen in the Indian market or, or also the global scenario I think it's you know the cuts and creases is something that I really like and then you know when you get inside the Urus frame blaze doors now the inside 
is as gorgeous as the outside now just look at it now this the red and black color combination is just one of the many combinations that you can think of cabin of the euros is something that i wanted to spend some time and oh my god the very fact that i'm sitting at the uh, driver's position uh, makes me feel as if uh, I'm sitting in front or in, in, in some in fighter aircraft, you know, the number of controls, the options. Oh my God. I mean, okay, I think I'm just uh, getting too excited. I'm like a small boy who's just given his dream car. And I think the Urus is pretty much like a dream SUV, a performance sports SUV. Um, in front of me, I've got the TFT uh, instrument uh, display, which is really, really nice. And I think you should uh, see what all can you get from the instrument cluster. Look at those graphics. Whoa, okay. Hmm, moving. You know, you've got the TFT. Now this, this, the center panel is a lot different than whatever you have ever seen on an SUV. It is super, super cool carbon fiber. Now you see there are two screens on the center panel. And uh, here you will get the AC controls and everything the car. Whereas here you can get every option about the Urus where you can personalize the seats, the, the seat uh, settings, the AC, uh, the drive modes and everything of that sort. But you know what's my favorite? It has to be this, the start stop button. And oh my God, I'm so tempted to start this beast of a car. Now moving on, we've got the different modes and I think there are some three on-road modes, three off-road modes. There are close to six modes. Uh, which uh, helps the Urus to go on, off-road, anywhere. I mean, ideally, I would not like to take it off-road, but the number of tech, the number of equipments that the Urus comes with is really amazing. But you know what? It's a Lamborghini, so obviously the driving elements have to be fantastic. However, that is not the main highlight of the Urus. The main talking element is that, the rear space. Well, I think I need to elaborate more on the rear space because it's finally the first Lamborghini in which you can travel with your family members. The Lamborghini says if you are six feet and you've got all the occupants who are six feet, you will be really comfortable in the Urus. And from the looks of it, I think uh, while the front is so comfortable, the rear can be a squeeze, something that we will find out when the car is with us during a review. I love the color combinations and uh, Lamborghini says that there are a lot of practical options. You can change the AC temperature. There are uh, a cup holders. So a lot of uh, practicality options that uh, Lamborghini has thought of. In a Lamborghini, you would be traveling with a briefcase or a backpack, but not the Urus. It actually has a very practical, generous boot space. And oh my God, I don't have the actual figures right now, but from the very look of it, you can easily pack in everything that you can think of, even perhaps a big dog, not that I would recommend, but you know, for that weekend getaway, anything and everything will squeeze in inside the Urus. Now that we have spoken about the design, the practicality, the space, there's only one element left and that is performance. It's a Lamborghini, so performance is a given. And the Urus is no longer a surprise. That beast of a motor that you see here is a 4-litre twin turbo. And something that you should know is the first Lamborghini to get a turbocharger. That muscle under the bonnet makes 650 PS of power and 850 Newton meters of torque. And this engine is mated to a new 8-speed automatic transmission. What all of that translates to? Well, a top speed of 305 km per hour and an acceleration of 3.6 seconds to reach 100. Now, all of that makes the Urus the fastest SUV in the world. Bajaj Auto showcased its entire 2018 range of motorcycles earlier this week, starting with the Discover 110 and the 125, including the refreshed Avenger Street 220 and the Avenger Cruise 220. Bajaj Auto has also updated its flagship motorcycle, the Dominar 400, with new paint schemes. There are no mechanical changes to the Dominar 400 for 2018, and the engine, gearbox and chassis are exactly the same as before. Pricing remains the same as well. The Consumer Electronics Show 2018 was underway in Las Vegas earlier this week and here are some of the highlights from the show that caught our fancy. Hello and welcome people, I am in Las Vegas for the CES 2018 
Now, this is a consumer electronics show, but every year the amount of automotive brands that have been participating at this show has been increasing. So I'm here to check them out and see what's new and in store for all of us. Unlike a typical motor show, the CES 2018 is more about futuristic concepts than production-ready cars. And as expected, autonomous driving technologies and alternative propulsion were the key areas of focus and then some. Nissan, for example, displayed its cutting-edge brain-to-vehicle technology, which uses a specialized headset that interprets the brain signals of the driver of an electric car. And the data is then used to optimize the car's driving dynamics. In short, the technology enables the car to learn the driver's reaction times and behavioral traits and then fine-tune its own driving systems accordingly to maintain a safe and fun driving experience. Driving around with a headset may look funny, but the technology has potential to shape safer drivers. At the CES, the Renault-Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance also announced plans to start a corporate venture capital fund intended to invest up to $1 million over the next five years in startups for developing new mobility technologies towards vehicle electrification, autonomous systems, connectivity and artificial intelligence. Toyota showcased some innovative plans too. Toyota's CES 2018 exhibit is not only about concept vehicles but also a new mobility platform called the e-palette. Let's take a look. At the moment, driverless robo-vehicles are considered to be the ultimate goal for autonomous driving technologies. The Toyota e-palette works in this direction and previews a scalable mobility solution that aims to do everything from ferrying people via taxi and rideshare programs to acting as a mobile office, food truck, medical center or autonomous cargo delivery vehicle. Toyota says that it has already partnered with the likes of Amazon, DD, Mazda, Pizza Hut and Uber to develop this initiative. How it fits into the legal barriers and the geofencing parameters surrounding driverless cars remains to be seen. What you see behind me is the Hyundai Nexo. Now this is a fuel cell electric vehicle but more importantly what is important from the Indian standpoint is that it could preview the new design direction that the Tussaw will take. Take a closer look. Kona inspired form shows the new design direction that Hyundai will set for its upcoming SUVs. It is a major departure from the current design philosophy and could polarize customers. I personally like what I saw at the CES. The Nexo will be the flagship for Hyundai's expanding eco vehicle portfolio. It also gets new assistance systems like the blind spot view monitor and radar guided technologies like lane following assist and highway driving assist. Now, the Kia Niro is one of the models that is expected to the Indian market. At least that is what the rumors say. What you see behind me is the Niro electric vehicle concept that was showcased here at the CES. Take a closer look. The main talking point for the Niro EV is the range. 380 kilometers, which is phenomenal for an urban crossover. Kia also points out that the underpinnings aren't shared with the Hyundai Ioniq. However, with both the car makers rumored to be looking positively at electric vehicles even for the Indian market in the long run, these cars and their technologies are something to watch out for. China has been funding a lot of startups in the automotive world and the latest to come out of there is this, the Byton concept. Take a closer look. The Byton electric SUV wants to change how we spend time in the traffic jams. It integrates level 3 autonomous driving technologies that can take partial responsibility of the driving in such conditions, while you can spend time interacting with your fellow passengers or simply connect to your digital life. A door-to-door -door infotainment system which can be controlled using touch, voice, facial or gesture controls integrates an adaptive software and health monitoring ecosystem called the Byton Life. The SUV has a driving range of up to 520 kilometers and will go on sale by the end of 2018 when it takes on rivals like the Q5, GLC and the X3. Speaking of infotainment systems, Panasonic showcased its cockpit concept of the future. It features an advanced heads-up display, instrumentation that uses a gaming engine for rich graphics and intuitive controls while the infotainment takes a safe, hands-free approach with gesture control technology. Most of these advancements don't seem too far away from reaching production. 
Mercedes-Benz used the CES to showcase its new MBUX infotainment system, which is set to debut on the all-new A-Class. The new system uses a 3D interface for a more immersive and intuitive control over the infotainment functions. It also uses high-resolution 3D graphics and new connectivity modules to enhance the user experience and the infotainment functions. For tech geeks, the MBUX uses the NVIDIA Parker 128 chip, a 4-core CPU and 8GB DDR4 RAM. In fact, with such feature-rich infotainment systems, modules for connected driving and autonomous technologies going mainstream, the processing power and the intelligence of the onboard computers are seeing major advancement too. Two of the biggest names in this business are NVIDIA and Intel, and both showcase their developments towards autonomous driving and automotive connectivity at the CES. In fact, thanks to the advancements in artificial intelligence and processing power, the automotive industry hints that fully autonomous cars are only 4-5 to five years away from being road legal. And that, in automotive terms, isn't too distant a future. Looks like we have run out of time on this week's episode of Overdrive, but remember you can stay in touch with the team through Facebook as well as Twitter and you can follow our latest videos on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next week. Until then, goodbye and drive and ride safe.